and welcome to our second lesson of Life Sciences Grade 12 Revision in which we look at chromosomes and this time we're looking at the process of meiosis in detail. At the end of the last segment we looked at mitosis, ordinary cell division which you should be familiar with now, where you have a cell with a certain number of chromosomes. Oh, and by the way, in a drawing, there's never going to be 46 chromosomes drawn. It, it would just be too complicated. So you usually find when you look at pictures, there are only, I would say, six or less chromosomes drawn in a cell, but whatever happens to those six chromosomes would be happening to all the other chromosomes as well. So we have the cell with four chromosomes, replication occurs, and the chromosomes appear double because the DNA has replicated. Then the cell divides and a half a chromosome goes into each cell. That's what happens in mitosis. Meiosis is a different story. It still has a similar background to it, but it's for a different purpose. We still have a cell with four chromosomes. Replication is occurring. The DNA doubles and the chromosomes are, consist of two chromatids. But what happens at the beginning of meiosis is that the chromosome number is halved. So that you have two chromosomes in each cell. But please note these chromosomes are still made of two chromatids. And in the second cell division of meiosis, that is when the chromosomes separate as they would during mitosis. Why does this happen? Let's think back to our life cycle of humans. We know about mitosis because mitosis is making identical cells. This happens in all our body or somatic cells, which are diploid. So a diploid cell divides and forms two diploid cells. That's mitosis. Meiosis, different story. Cells start off diploid, but when they undergo meiosis, the two cells formed are in or haploid. So the chromosome number in meiosis one is halved. The second division in meiosis is simply to separate the two chromatids from each other. So let's have a look at an overall scheme. So we start off with a parent cell which has a pair of chromosomes and remember these are called homologous chromosomes because they contain instructions for the same characteristics. The chromosomes then replicate and they form the typical chromosome structure, looking a bit like an X. Then, in the first division of meiosis, the pairs split. So each new cell has only got one chromosome. And that is why that is called the reduction division, because it's reducing the number of chromosomes. Then these chromosomes are still doubled. So that's why the cell goes into its second division, where the chromatids separate from each other, and we end up with four cells. And the four cells have half the number of chromosomes. In other words, the four cells are haploid. And look at them. 
They are different. Variation occurs. Now, another thing that actually contributes to variation is something called crossing over. And that happens between homologous chromosomes at the beginning of meiosis, and that is also to provide variation. Let's have a look and see how it happens. This is a homologous pair of chromosomes. One is blue, one is pink, and that is simply to show that there is a maternal and a paternal chromosomes, and the genes they have on them might be different. Then what happens is they cross over each other. The chiasma is simply the crossing point, but the important thing is that where they have crossed over, the ends break and rejoin. And the result is, if there's our chromosomes to start with, that's what they look like when they're crossing over. Oh, you might also have heard the words bivalent or tetrad. That's referring to these homologous chromosomes as they're busy crossing over. Then the important thing is the result. Because if we look at the result here, the daughter chromosomes, after the meiosis has finished, if you look, none of these daughter chromosomes, none of them are identical. And that's what crossing over does. It makes sure that there is variation in the offspring. And the chromosomes that have got bits of two different chromosomes together are simply called recombinants because they are a combination of different genes together for the first time. So let's have an overview. We're starting off with a diploid cell with two chromosomes. The DNA replicates. In meiosis one, the homologous chromosomes separate. And if we're looking at humans, in each cell there will be 23 chromosomes and we call that number N or haploid. And after meiosis 2, we have four cells which are all haploid and they are going to form the gametes that we have learned about when we did the reproductive system, either sperm or ova. Oh, if it's an ovum, only one of these will survive to become the ovum. If it's sperm, all of them will survive to become sperm. Now, let's have a careful look at the different stages. What is actually happening? We know so far there are two divisions. There's meiosis one and meiosis two. And each of these divisions goes through those same phases that we looked at when we did mitosis. But there is a twist in the tail. So let's have a look and see how they're the same as, meios as mitosis and where they are different. Okay, during interphase, we have an ordinary looking cell with its nucleus and the chromatin network. As the cell enters division, it goes into prophase. And in prophase, the chromosomes form. That's exactly what happened during mitosis. But something else happens. And these chromosomes get together in their homologous pairs. So this is very important because the pairs of chromosomes, in other words, the homologous chromosomes that you got from your mother and from your father, those two chromosomes get together and pair up. And what is happening here is some of the chromosomes will be crossing over. Not all the chromosomes cross over, 
the chromosomes cross over at different places, it's different every single time, and that increases the chance of variation. While that's happening, the rest of prophase, as it would occur in meiosis, is also occurring. We can see here there are your centrioles moving apart, forming the spindle fibers between them. Your nuclear membrane has disappeared. But that's not the focus of what is happening in meiosis. Let's have a look at the second phase of the first meiotic division, metaphase. And what do we know about metaphase? M means the chromosomes are at the middle, along the equator. But this is different to what happens in mitosis because the pairs go to the chromosome. The pairs line up along the equator. So that's one of the important differences between mitosis and meiosis. Next, we have anaphase. And remember that A means they're moving away from each other. What is moving away from each other? An entire chromosome. Because the chromatids remain attached. And it's the homologous pairs that split. So the homologous chromosomes separate. And that is what reduces the chromosome number. So let's have a look here. That is now the same cell in telophase. If we look, this is now dividing to form two cells. There is one of the two new cells. There's the other one. And if you have a look, how many chromosomes do they have? They each have two chromosomes. In other words, the chromosome number has halved. The cells are haploid. But it's important to notice that the chromosomes themselves are still double. The two chromatids are still attached. Then the cell goes into the second meiotic division, and in prophase, a new spindle is forming here. You can see a new spindle is forming. The chromosomes are already there, so they don't have to form. They have already formed. As the cell goes into metaphase, the chromosomes arrange along the middle of the cell, but this time the chromosomes arrange themselves individually along the middle. In Anaphase, when the cells move away from each other, then the chromosomes split and the chromatids move to each pole. Then when we get to telophase, at the end of meiosis 2, and we have a look at the cells, they're there, they're now separated. How many chromosomes do we have in each cell? We have two chromosomes in each cell. But what's quite interesting, if you look at these two cells, look at that one and that one, you can see that the chromosomes in them are different. And if you look at those two cells and you compare them, they're also different. So it's important in that four haploid daughter cells are formed the chromosomes are single, and the important thing is all of those chromosomes are not identical. In other words, there's going to be variation in whichever offspring arise from those egg or sperm cells that have been formed during meiosis. Sure, I think we need a break by now. Welcome back. Before the break, we looked at meiosis. And you do need to know the different stages of meiosis and what happens in each stage. But to get the big picture, to understand why meiosis occurs, it's also quite important for you to understand why does this happen. So let's have a look. What is the 
aim of meiosis. And the aim of meiosis is to introduce variation. So if we have a look at this particular slide, there's your original cell, red and blue chromosomes, maternal and paternal chromosomes, getting together in their homologous pairs. And then what have they done here? They have crossed over. And can you see how that has changed as a result of crossing over? And it goes into meiosis 1 and into meiosis 2. And if we have a look at these nuclei, they are all different. So crossing over is very important to provide variation. There is another technique that also provides variation and that is because when the chromosomes line up in their homologous pairs during metaphase 1, it depends on how they arrange themselves as to which chromosomes will actually end up in which particular cell. So if you have a look, those chromosomes there, first possibility, the blue chromosomes are both on the same side. The blue chromosomes, which could be the paternal ones, both end up in the same cell. Or the other possibility is that the maternal and paternal chromosomes get mixed up. And that is why children will have some chromosome or some characteristics from each of the grandparents, because those characteristics carry through on the maternal and paternal chromosomes. So we find there are four different combinations of chromosomes with only two chromosomes. So you can imagine with 20, 30, 40 chromosomes, how many different combinations could be the outcome. And that is why no two people on Earth look exactly the same, except identical twins. So this is to provide variation and this is a random assortment of chromosomes. So those are the two things that give rise to variation, crossing over and the random assortment of chromosomes during metaphase one. So let's put these together and compare mitosis, which is the same as meiosis two and meiosis one. So if we have a look, there's a cell during meiosis in prophase. Those are your homologous pairs. Okay, they stick together. Whereas in prophase in mitosis, the chromosomes arrange themselves individually. In metaphase in meiosis, the chromosomes have arranged themselves in their homologous pairs along the equator, whereas in mitosis or meiosis II, the chromosomes arrange themselves individually along the equator. So in anaphase, when the chromosomes separate and go into two different cells, in mitosis, they go individually into the cells, so each cell has exactly the same chromosomes as the parent cell. Whereas if you look in meiosis, in anaphase, the homologous pairs have separated. And can you see there's been a bit of crossing over here? There's a little bit of variation added. And after meiosis 2, we have four cells and they are each different and they each contain only two chromosomes. In other words, the chromosome number has been halved. Now, how are questions asked? 
on this particular section. So let's have a look at some practice questions. You're often shown pictures of cells undergoing meiosis and you have to be able to identify the phases. In other words, you need to know what a diagram or what a cell in metaphase would look like, what a cell in prophase would look like, etc. It's then linked to where does this happen? It could be where does this happen in a human male, which would be the testes. It could be where does this happen in a flower? That would be in the pollen sacs of the flower, things like that. Then you would have to analyze which part contains DNA, and that's B only, which part attaches to the centromeres, and that would, of course, be the spindle fibers, which is C. And then what forms the spindle fibers? That would be D, which is the centriole. Fairly straightforward, but they can also be quite difficult ones. So having a look here, this shows chromosomes, and it says all the chromosomes in a cell. So how many chromosomes are in this cell? One, two, three, four, five, six chromosomes. Okay, name the type of cell division. That would obviously be meiosis, and we know that because they're in their homologous pairs. The phase of cell division during which they do this, and that would be prophase one. Please don't forget when you're doing meiosis, you have to say after prophase, you have to say is it prophase one or two, or else you will lose marks. Okay, then where in the female human body would this occur, which would obviously be in the ovaries, and then how many chromosomes will be found in each daughter cell at the end of this cell division? If there's six chromosomes in the cell to start, how many would end up in the cell or the gamete formed? It would be three. Okay, then what do we call each pair of chromosomes? That's homologous chromosomes. Why are they light and dark colors? And that is to show you that one member of each pair comes from the father, one or one from your father, one from your mother. So it would be maternal and paternal. And then what process is happening? And here you would have to describe the process of crossing over. Another practice questions, again, similar pictures of different stages of meiosis, and you have to identify the different parts, um, centrioles, chromosomes, cell membrane, things like that. So there's always um, simple questions. In other words, do you know your terminology that get asked? Okay, then it can be a little bit more difficult. You have to give the name and number of the phase, which shows the random arrangement of chromosomes at the equator. And that random arrangement of chromosomes at the equator, crossing over, which is showing crossing over, and which is showing non-disjunction. In other words, when one chromosome is not going where it's supposed to be. Then, how many chromosomes will be found in the cells at the end of meiosis? A sperm. And I want to just quickly discuss this one. We're running out of time. The somatic cells of a normal mother who has a son with Down syndrome. What is a somatic cell? It's an ordinary body cell. Where are the problems associated with Down syndrome? Where do they occur? In the ovaries. So, what will the normal mother be? She will have a normal number of chromosomes in all her cells. So she would have 46 chromosomes in each cell. I hope this has helped you a little bit. Don't be scared. Remember, there's always got to be some straightforward questions. 
So if you know what the different parts are called, you will always be able to get some marks. I wish you well in the exams. Bye.